Thank you so much for that really insightful discussion. Um, we are going to move on to our next part of today. So for the next bit, I'd like to talk to you a bit about talent. Our talent is a lifeblood of advertising and marketing in our industries. However, we have a major talent shortage. In the period of January to March 2022, there were an estimated 366,000 people working in the advertising and marketing industry. This marks a 14% decrease from pre-pandemic levels. This is why, at the beginning of 2022, the Advertising Association set up a talent task force to look into the problem. One of its first actions was to commission Credos, the industry think tank, to conduct preliminary research to inform a course of action. The first problem raised was the lack of awareness surrounding advertising as a potential career choice. As an industry, we can do better at promoting our industry as a choice for people to come and work in it. Basically, we need to advertise advertising. We need to remind people just how brilliant an industry advertising can be to work in. Creative, strategic, exciting, inspirational, varied, sociable, high energy and enjoyable. It is crucial that we show that Britain remains a global advertising and marketing powerhouse, a hub for creativity and tech and a must for the best talent from around the world. The issue has also informed the UK Young Lions competition that the Advertising Association run. They set a brief this year to create an advertising campaign targeting school and university leavers and potential career switchers, plus those that influence them, schools, colleges and the wider community. We'd like to share two of the pieces of winning work with you now. First, the winning film, which was created by Matt Nicholas, senior creative at VCCP and Nick Archer, creative at Sky Creative. Love it. And secondly, the winning print ad by Joe Sayer, arts director and Marion Miranda, copywriter at the Leaf Agency. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to have a read of that. Go for it. You're done? You good? Okay, cool, onwards. And now I'd like to ask our panelists to join me on stage to share their thoughts, please. So please welcome Tammy Einov, CEO of Adam and Eve DDB, Pete Markey, Chief Marketing Officer at Boots UK, and Kat Bovicevic, uh, Managing Director at Manning Gottlieb OMD, who is standing in today for Natalie Bell, who is unfortunately unable to take part. So can we get a round of applause for them, please? I'm going to very seamlessly run to the other <laughs> side of the stage now, so give me two seconds. In fact, I'm going to walk over quite fabulously, so just applaud me. <laughs> as well. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, okay so um, before we begin, we'd actually like this to be a bit of an interactive session. So I think we've got some roving mics as well. Uh, so I want some good thoughts, please. There is a break after this, so you can get like, your coffee fix. <laughs> so I want some good questions. Um, we're going to go straight into the panel for now. Thank you all for joining me. Really, really Thank glad you. you're here. Uh, firstly, I'd like your thoughts on the two pieces of work that we've just seen and read. Uh, what do you think a successful campaign for advertising looks like uh, for people both in our industry and more importantly, for the talented people outside of it as well? Um, Tammy, I think I'm going to start with you if that's okay. I wonder the names of those creatives. I, but they're, they are, um, I like both of those um, ads because to me they spoke about something so unique about the industry, which is mm. this ability to do something that you're truly passionate about. I'm not sure there are m that many industries where you can go in and do something that you are passionate about and you can combine creativity to drive real business growth. That, for me, has always been the magic. It's what attracted me to the industry, and I think it's something that we don't celebrate enough, this, this marriage between the, the passion and the creativity and, and the results that 
um, that drives. So both of those um, executions, although different, really talk to that sort of the, the inner passion, that creativity that a career in advertising um, can unleash. And I think to, to think about how to advertise advertising, I do think that, uh, and I've talked to, to people about this, we work in advertising and I don't know if we actually stop to approach this in the way that we would when we work with our clients. And I used to work with, with Pete and I know as, as someone running an agency we would look, we would look at the, the issue and we would think about how we would engage with the audiences, how we would actually make sure that the people who are currently in the industry are amazing ambassadors for it because they feel passionate about it and they feel happy and I think there's a real energy and, a, and real momentum that comes from having really happy, engaged uh, people who work in the industry. But then I think we would look to go, okay, well, how can we actually create buzz and excitement and talkability and actually create a sense of momentum and, and excitement about this in culture and find a way, the best vehicle to do that and then think about the best vehicle to then um, target people on a sort of more targeted approach and, and share information about what different facets of the industry are. And then the crucial thing, which the panels have talked about, and I'm sure we'll go on to talk about later on today, is make it accessible and make it inviting and make it possible to uh, have a career in advertising. And all of those things have to work together to create something that's exciting, accessible, wonderful. Um, and that's how I would want to approach it. <laughs> Thank you. Kat, same question to you, please. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to bring the media lens yeah, to it. Yeah. And I would say that every great campaign has uh, a really clearly defined task attached to it. And so that means defining what we mean by advertising. Is it media as well? Is it all our media brand partners? You know, the whole ecosystem. And it also means identifying the audiences that we're trying to go after. And I'll explain why those are important to me through the lens of those two pieces of work. Um, it, it, in terms of the film piece, it tapped into that great thought about, um, you know, uh, many of us are becoming our own public publicists and, and producers, and that's a real growing trend. And, and you can see how something like that can become a body of work that lives beyond film and go native into platforms, publishing platforms like TikTok or LinkedIn. Um, but what it is focused on is a really narrow tranche of the potential entrance into the industry. So it is very youth focused, but, you know, very dynamic. Um, and you'd want to see how it can expand into, I think the panel of four just touched on this, people who are experienced hires, career switches, or um, you know, potentially returning parents uh, from career breaks. So again, understanding who it is that we're trying to talk to is going to be crucial in delivering a great campaign. And then once you define those people, that's why I think the, the print ad is brilliant, um, because it taps into that sort of unleash your creativity uh, space, and it's talking to potential career switches. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily take into account how we define advertising. So I'd love to see that develop into how do you help people unleash their inner analyst, their inner collaborator, their inner coder. There's so many roles available in this industry now that you know this, this work needs to broaden out to and, and include. Um, and there's an overheard benefit of being explicit about all of those types of people and the skills and the, um, uh, you know, that they could bring, which is that speak, then the people in our industry already who display those attributes and those that have those skills feel valued and know that this is a place for them. And I think the final thing that I would say about it is they both pieces tap into um, truths about our industry now. So uh, you know, it's a place with the high levels of creativity. Um, you know, it's place it's a place where you can bring lots of different transferable skills into. But I would really want to see us kind of take it into a place that is more about the future and the emerging brilliant things about this industry that you know we're increasingly responsible, increasingly diverse, increasingly purposeful. There's so many great things that we can talk about in terms of our future. And if we speak to our future, we're probably more likely to attract the kind of talent that can help us to deliver that future. So I think all of those things, I mean, it all just starts with having a really brilliant well-defined task that can take us into some brilliant spaces, I think. Thank you. Pete, same question to you. Great golly, how do I build on those points? Both fantastic. I think um, I really like the creative work because it, it does meet people where they are, doesn't it? And say, you already like this, you're already embracing this. Have you thought about taking those skills further and, as you said, driving that passion? 
Um, I think it's really exciting time to work in our industry, building on what Kat's saying. There are so many facets to what you could do, and I, I've been in this industry over 20 years, and there's things I can now do. God, I wish I could have done that 20 years ago with data, with data science, with creativity, with fantastic media partners like Google and others. You think, God, the things you can now do make our industry very fast-paced, very exciting, and the skills you need are, are, are quite, quite wide. And uh, I was thinking about this coming into today because we, we launched an ad campaign yesterday, and thinking the people that were involved in shaping that, the skills to get there, I think most people wouldn't know that or appreciate all the mechanisms of how those things work and come together. And I think there are lots of stories we can tell to bring more of that to life. Um, without fail, I, I get emailed a fair amount, as probably people in the room do, say, can I have work experience in marketing? And you're brilliant. They go, which team do you want to spend time in? I've got no idea. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being critical because they just go, I like the idea of marketing. So we say, right, what I'm going to do is you're going to spend time in our research team. You're going to spend time in our agency. You're going to spend time with the media. And, so, and then at the end of the week or two weeks, I go, which bit do you enjoy the most? And often the answer is surprising. Because you imagine you're coming up, God, I loved working on that ad campaign. The answer is, I love research. God, the media bit was really exciting. And I think the stories we need to tell, and I think what's great is we've got the mechanisms now to reach those audiences. We just need to find and bring more of those stories to life. And it's certainly something in the ad Advertising Association we're talking about is on the back of this great work, how do you create more of those stories so we can go out and bring our industry to life? The rich wonder of what it is, but also I love this thought of where's it going? Mm -hmm and be part of shaping where it's going to, be part of the future uh, is really exciting because the industry is going to change. In 20 years' time, it'll be unrecognisable again, and that's brilliant too. Come and shape its future. What a great opportunity. I love that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go off script a bit because you just talked about work experience, and that's very me. I, I like okay. this conversation. Um, a few years ago when I was working at the BBC, I quickly realised that my work wasn't making as much impact as it could because there were some communities that just weren't engaging with the BBC at all. And I would go into schools, teachers would invite me in and I'd go in and speak and I'd be like, my name's Ben, LGBT correspondent. You would have seen me on a six o'clock news last night. And they're like, the who? The what? Like, <laughs> six o'clock news where? Like, where, where do I see this? Like, what is it? And all of the time and focus I was pouring into speaking on the Today programme and speaking on the six o'clock news, 10 o'clock news, it wasn't reaching the people that... I was ultimately trying to speak to, which was like Gen Z. So I started going to these schools and speaking to young people and it eventually worked its way into like this confidence academy that I'm, I'm building at the moment and that should hopefully be a charity by the end of this year and we appreciate all corporate funding, just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, but it really engages, it allows me to travel the UK and speak to young people on a weekly basis and I deliver this confidence masterclass where I go into schools and um, it's a one hour masterclass basically wrapping up journalism in like this, uh, in this package where young people are forced to find their voice. And I give them a kick up the backside, I'm like, get your lives together. And when they go into places for work experience, one of the biggest issues they find is that they don't have the confidence to be in those spaces. It's scary. Yeah. For me, as we talked about work being working class, like going into some of your agency is, is a scary experience. You're suddenly faced with people that don't speak like you, don't look like you. And yes, you're told to bring your whole self, but you can't. Yeah. When I started the BBC, I was a different person. I can't, when I look back, people are like, oh wow, you speak differently. Well, of course I do, because I was speaking on Radio 4 every morning. Like it's changed my accent because I had to just assimilate to what people expected of me. So I would just say that when you have these work experience young people in, um, it's about making sure that there is a, a comfort space for them to actually be themselves, um, not necessarily push themselves to already be the culture that you're at mm. in your workplace. But then also, the other point, so we're going to get back to this. The other point is I'd really just encourage you to actually go out to meet these young people as well. Um, a lot of your campaigns are incredible, but also I travel mainly with my Confidence Academy to coastal Britain. And I'm shocked by some of the things I see. Obviously, we're in London now. This is fantastic. But to go to the likes of Blackpool, to go to Plymouth, I was in Cleethorpes the other day. I was like, what on earth is going on here? I was like, where's the funding? And it's mad because some of these young people say there's no jobs, there's no work experience, there's no opportunities, there's nothing for them to the point they finish college and then they just expect to just be gaming at home, claiming benefits or whatever else. So I would really encourage all of you to step outside of this London bubble and go and speak to these young people, not just expect them to come to you via work experience. That's just me on my soapbox, but anyway. Um, the next question I have here is, Apparently, the Mail on Sunday recently published an article on the advertising industry that referenced Mad Men. 
What other cultural reference points are we competing against currently? And what are the problems with this? I'm going to come to you, Pete, first. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I mean, Mad, Mad Men oh, is a great program, isn't it? But obviously, it, it's dealing with a historic period in the industry, which we've moved on from. And I think um, I love, for example, we had Mad Women this week, didn't we? So I know Catherine on the front row is pioneering in that with Wackle. What a great bit of content. If you haven't seen it, it's on Channel 4 on Catch Up, I imagine now, streaming all over the country. But I think. Um, I think there are a number of other really interesting reference points. There's that, the great work that Wackler are doing, the film that's gone out this week. But also, think, are they outvertising are here as well? Uh, they do phenomenal work. If you're not aware of outvertising, absolutely amazing work in highlighting fantastic content that celebrates the LGBTQ community. And, and what's great is they do awards each year that you can't enter. You can't enter those awards. They go and pick the very best work and go, that's the sort of work that celebrates uh, real, in, uh, real inclusion uh, in a wonderful way. So there are, I think, organizations uh, creating great content, going out and champion, uh, championing specific areas of inclusion. Um, but I think back to my earlier point, I think we need to bring more of these stories out and talk them up more. And that's where my hope is. I, I've just taken on a role uh, supporting Front Foot uh, with Advertising Association. I think we've got a role in the AA to help bring those stories out of the industry and tell them, uh, working with some of the fantastic organizations that are represented here today. So yeah, watch this space, more to come. I love your point actually about uh, going to schools. I think it comes as much about listening. So come and tell us your stories. Come and help us find those bits we can bring out, lift and celebrate. Yeah. Thank you. Same to you. Well, Phil, I have mixed feelings about that piece because compared to the Guardian piece that I think some of you would have read a couple of weeks ago, uh, which is all about you know, sal you know, salaries and overburn and all of these, these problematic things about the industry, this is actually, the piece was really positive, but it was positive from the perspective of, I think, what the, what the journalists thought that we would want to think about ourselves. And I, I find Mad, Man, Mad, Mad Men quite problematic in that it is about, it, it, it is interesting, right? But it dramatizes the profession. It doesn't, it doesn't professionalize it. And that's an area we really need to get towards if we're trying to diversify our talent base. Um, so other touch points are things like W1T or if you're sort of my age uh, you might remember Nathan Barley you know a lot of these are basically kind of like massive inside jokes and they're not accurate and they're not aspirational um, and ultimately none of them are, are geared towards getting people into our industry which is okay but but that's what's out there and so we do need to organize like Wackle did with Mad Women and 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 put more controlled narrative into the public sphere and and I think what that controlled narrative needs to, to bring out is the reality of us working in a totally different industry to what it, uh, what's being portrayed currently. So you've got many more different roles, many more different disciplines. Our supply chains are all becoming weird and wonderful and AI and metaverse sort of related. And, and, uh, and, and we're in there really understanding and analyzing and delivering growth potential for startups and scale ups. So what we need is entrepreneurial thinkers, and to your point, ones who are feeling comfortable and supported in bringing their whole selves to often a corporate environment. Um, and we're com so we're competing on the one hand with finance consultancies, we're competing with startups and sort of portfolio careers, being an influencer, and, and also, you know, just you know, the, the coastal gaming, you know, why get a job, what is the what is the point? So I think the missed advantage against all of those things is advertising's proximity to the cultural narrative and also the sense of kind of collective purpose that's developing here. So the Mail on Sunday article kind of referenced, you know, the Guinness ad and they referenced the Cadbury's gorilla uh, drum, drumming. Um, but they missed the opportunity to talk about a whole swathe of work that could make people fall in love with the industry. This girl can, for example, all the Maltesers disability work, the Channel 4 breaks, you know, there's, there's just so much out there, you know, and, and more coming government work that we do at MG, the, the purpose disruptors, uh, work that's coming down the line. So there, there is so much. I think we can even do more than kind of make advertising famous. We can make people fall in love with the industry, and I think that's probably going to be going to have to be the goal. Thank you, Tammy. Cultural reference points. So, I, just a point on Mad Men. I love Mad Men, but I, I do think it compounds some of the um, misperceptions about our advertising. And I would going to go out there and say I would love for there to be a sort of a modern day series, something, a, a, a way, a vehicle that actually allows us to 
show what advertising, to your point, is today, which, which is so exciting and so diverse and, and touches so many aspects of, of different industries. So I, I, I think Mad Men as a cultural point is an interesting point because I can't think of another one that talks or creates a narrative around our industry that creates buzz and talkability around it. And I think it's an opportunity for us to look at that and go, wouldn't it be wonderful if we took the brilliance of that and you know, created an asset or assets, as, as Pete was saying, stories that, um, that got people talking about it, that got people talking about um, advertising, but through the lens of what's inspiring and amazing today. And I, I remember um, scenes from Admin where they're, they're very sort of focused on selling. And I think a lot of young people coming into the industry would be so fascinated to learn about the work that we do to change behavior purpose-led work, work that actually makes a difference out there in the world. And, I, I, and I, think, I think it's exciting in a way that there is that opportunity to do something like that, but bring it into the 21st century and, and forward-facing. I'm not sure if I answered your question. You did, and you kind of took my next one as well, actually. Uh, but, <laughs> but we can focus on it. Um, how do we shift the perceptions of advertising as a brand to truly reflect what is it like as an industry in the 21st century? Um, I mean, would you like to take that point? Because you kind of I think hit it anyway, yeah. Yeah, I think, it's, um, I think it is that. I think it is op sort of opening, uh, opening the doors to, to, to the, the public to see what it is. And I do, I do think there's misconceptions, uh, and I do think there's a lack of knowledge. So anything we can do to create that buzz and actually uh, even um, semiotically move it away from what people associated mm -hmm. with Mad Men and, and very sort of old-fashioned ways of looking at it. And, and finding all those opportunities to showcase what we do and, and just create excitement around it. And, and to your point, I think we'll make a mistake if we do it from London and just broadcast it. I think we have to go out there and, and, and excite, excite people um, you know, in, in, out of London and, and, and beyond. Um, that's what I would do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think uh, I, I think there is some a real a real opportunity to shape the narrative through some of those less overt vehicles, like you know programming. But then there's also, if you think about the building blocks that are in place in the industry now, so some of the outreach programs that are in place, some of the professional networks like MEFA that are forming, and and um, you know the professionalisation of of our industry with with initiatives like All In, some of the IPA work. That we, all the building blocks that we need to get started are, are, are here and, and we can make a loud noise quite quickly with them as well um, to shine a light on, I think you said, some of the incredible efforts, the stories that are going around the industry. And then the how, I think, is probably for someone that's much more creative than me. I think we do a lot of recruitment campaigns in our agency and, so, and I, what I can see from them is there's so many roots in. You can showcase the breadth of roles that exist. That There was an incredible piece that DCM did with BAFTA that was uh, sort of showed, to your point, yeah. the end-to-end -end of bringing a film to the, to the public and, uh, and that personalised the opportunity for people. You can Met Police or British Airways Hero Current Staff, that's another really valuable um, you know, the technique to show our current industry members and contributors how valued they are. Um, you can, one of my favourite recruitment campaigns, I think, was um, the, the Royal Marines, I think, put at the top of, uh, of really hard climbing walls, uh, like just a, a Royal Marines logo saying, if you, if you got here, you can make it there, like with us. And I think that's a really nice, you know, could we flip something like that? Um, to provoke kind of reappraisal for people, uh, you know, to, to see, to almost challenge them to see what they could build or bring to our industry. So again, it's not, it's not my swim lane, <laughs> but there's, there's lots of routes. Whatever route we choose, though, I think uh, has been raised a couple of times. It needs to be backed up with the appropriate, appropriate scaffolding for all of the talent coming in so that they can flourish and thrive in the industry and, and bring their, their full selves. Thank you. And Pete? Yeah, um, I'm building on both those points. I think um, we've definitely got stories to tell. I think as brands and agencies, we need to be braver at allowing them to be told. And um, it's interesting. I've been judging a few awards recently. There have been some awards events. And um, there's so many great stories sort of sat there. And you kind of go, how do we surface these? And, and um, I know there's not room on an awards night because you know, and the winner is so-and-so. And you think, I'd love to know the story behind that campaign. No idea. 
And there was one I was at recently where I was at like a garden centre one for like amazing DM. I was like, genuinely, I'd like to know what they did. But no idea what they wanted. <laughs> well, well done, that garden centre. But, um, <laughs> but, but let's tell the story of garden centres. But it's um, but there's some really interesting work. How do we get that work out? Um, the other bit I like, which I think Kat's touching on, and I really, particularly the first the, the film that played is, is starting with the reference points of where people are at and actually media consumption, I know we all know this, is completely changed. If I look at the way my kids consume media, my son's 22, um, barely watches linear TV, mostly consumed through social media. I think actually, you know, the vehicle in which we're going to do this is going to be quite different from the one we might imagine. And actually the first video played that brilliantly, which is meet people through the channels and vehicles which they're most using today. You know, actually the way we might crack this might be through some really clever TikTok or meta content. Um, and, or Google even as well. Um, you never know. Just think about a range of platforms. Uh, many are available. They're all good. Um, <laughs> and all in the room. Um, but actually, the, the way in could be really interesting. And I think, you know, working with, about your point, who's our target, working directly with our audience, what are the gaps that are missing, what are the best channels to reach, and creating those stories. They're powerful. How do we lift them out? But as brands, we need to be brave and say, we're going to allow our story to be told. We're going to allow you behind the cameras and behind the scenes to see what helped this work develop. Um, and also the journey to get there. Uh, I was talking to someone last night at a Marketing Academy event about a very famous campaign that she'd worked on. And she was just saying, it was so bloody hard. Like, and actually, you'd think it's really easy to deliver this purpose. Actually, God, it was so difficult. And actually, part of the journey and excitement of working advertising mm. is a craft of, of getting you there. And it's hard work, and it's joyful and wonderful. So yeah, let's tell more of those stories. I think our role in the AA is to do a lot more of that as well. Love that. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to see if there's any questions in the room. Questions, comments, anything. Yes, I think we have a roving microphone as well. Or maybe you can just shout at us. Should I just shout? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hi. Ellie, Brixton Finishing School. Thank you. Yay. I'm fizzing with lots of things to say, but I just wanted to say thank you for being so passionate about wanting to advertise advertising. I mean, I work with a lot of 14 to 19 year olds. We have a program called Adventure, which is a school's outreach. We love it. We love it. Signing you up. <laughs> and we, since 2021, we've been out to, well, we've signed up 110 schools, done 130 career talks engaged 21,000 socially mobile, multi-ethnic and neurodiverse young talents. All of this has been without funding, and I think the time is for us to unite as a room. This sounds amazing, the work's amazing. I would just love all the organisations to come together and we can all maybe have the same dialogue about how to crack the problem and create a much more blended, enriched and diverse pipeline in. So I wonder, my question is, would you be up for that? <laughs> 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 I mean, would you? <laughs> can I speak to that? I mean, because we've been, at, at MD, we run a thing called um, Open Media, MD Open Media Academy, and that's where we take all of our media training collateral and we just sort of put it out there. But we also mentor some underrepresented communities through that material and through into the industry. They don't have to join us. If, we, if they do, that's excellent. But they've gone everywhere in the industry. Um, but that's very media focused. And then we found when we worked with other organizations, um, you know, people who we speak to about coming for roles in ours think they're going to come in and, you know, do a big influencer campaign. They realize, you know, managing a PPC campaign is a bit different to that. And so I think having that combined narrative where people who are prospectively coming into the industry can see the breadth of it with one voice rather than lots of different bits of it and trying to piece it together themselves, it would be really valuable. So yeah, I think we, you know, we'd be really interested to talk to, to all of the stakeholders in this area about how do we join it up a bit more. We, no, we definitely. I think we do, do it together with the Advertising Association. Let's have a follow-up. I think the, I mean, the big takeaway here is it's great to see the progress, but there's so much more to be done. Um, I don't think any of us can walk out of the room and go saying, job done. Absolutely not. So I think any initiative that's going to help us move the dial on, on the things we saw earlier on, yeah, definitely. Up for. And I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think we, all, we should all carry on doing the brilliant work that I know companies are doing to, to, to make a change. But if we can actually come together yeah. and and see the value of the cumulative effect of that I think it will it will you know hopefully be exponentially um, more rewarding I'm very happy <laughs> <laughs> I love that yeah. Yay. Uh, let's go yes over there thank you go for it Sorry. 
just wondering what your thoughts are attracting talent um, at a slightly older, more experienced end. It's something that I've had a really positive experience of, and I'd just love to see more of it in the industry. I, th I think it's a really important, massively important theme. I think um, it's interesting. I, I, I think we need to a, crack the industry open the way we just described, but I do think some of the the fast track training I think we need to offer now, and I think I mean that for all all ages to get into some of the careers in marketing. We're interested. We talk about it a lot in Boots actually, around even moving between teams within Boots now. Of you know, it used to be you could. I mean, when I started, I agree. I could work in the data team, then the comms team, then the and these roles are quite some quite technical now. I think we need to make it a lot easier for people to be able to get into the industry, fast track the experience and training they've got, and not assume you need X years experience to do something. Um, so I'd love to see us get to that point, but I think together it's how we train and skill at speed to do that. And there are already some great programs that do that. I think we need more of them, more of them. And also be clear what sort of, if you haven't got the technical skills, what kind of personality or, or overall thing you could bring to the job that we're looking for in the industry. So I think it's a, it's a super point. Yeah, I'd love to do more in that space. Yeah, I, I think we've got to do more to, um, to help people realise their potential, you, you know, within the industry. Because I think with experienced hires, we've, we've managed to take on board one or two people who are career switching. And it's, it's been broadly a success. But I think to do that in volume, you really have to address the, uh, the perception that, you know, if you're not, you know, the, the owner or founder of your own company by the time that you're 40 failed, you know, I think you used the term washed up at, you know, it's, that, and that's just not the case. So I think we need to really illustrate to people what success can look like outside of like just a single view of a C-suite position for more experienced talent to come into our industry and thrive. I, I, I I agree, and I think it, I think it's crucial for the industry. I think as uh, I think bringing in experience from other sectors is is incredibly important, and um, and and I've seen the value of it. We've seen the value of it, and we've got to just to echo what uh, Peace and Cat have said. We've got to make sure that that there is a there is a way of bringing talent in that. Um, that doesn't feel like that there is no opportunity uh, to, to bring in all the experience uh, from one sector into another. So we've, we've got to open it up because that's, it's, it's, it's an incredibly valuable part of the future of the industry as well. Thank you. Thanks, we're gonna do one more question. Just that, yes, please. Oh, I'm coming. While we're making way with the mic, there's some comments online. Um, one from someone anonymous says, is the ad industry guilty of drinking too much of its own Kool-Aid? <laughs> Shade. <laughs> and, um, there's one that says, do you think one of the issues, as Pete alluded to, is people don't know what a career in advertising is and don't understand it? I think we've kind of talked about that as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Golly, that's loud. Um, but I'm Charlotte Reid. Uh, I'm co-founder of 40 Over 40, um, which was the industry's kind of first initiative for recognising people are over 40 in the industry and can work in the industry. And I was really um, interested by the points that were raised around this sort of a perception and reality thing going on, I think. And I think this is where a lot of the kind of challenges lie within the industry. Um, we're really good at selling a perception, you know, in advertising, selling how amazing products are and experiences and things like that. When I think kind of where the attraction and retention with talent comes from is that if you go into um, agencies, is improving the actual reality, the actual experiences, is kind of where it all starts from. And I think that's going to help across so many different areas in terms of age and diversity, um, because I think it's, it's that this, this is, that really needs to kind of be addressed. And lots of people have talked about kind of trust and honesty. And I think having this space with All In has allowed people to have that difficult conversations and be really honest about what's going on so that now we've got a chance to kind of address it in so many different ways because we've got lots of people here who are really clever creative powerful people so you know changing that reality is going to help with the perception it's going to kind of amplify isn't it yeah absolutely. i love that and that's actually a very good point for us to go to a break on because you can all discuss it over a drink <laughs>